Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Got a great person on the call today. His name's Jeff. Jeff, man, it's good to it's good to hear your voice. How are you doing? I'm good, Steve. It's uh, <laughs> we've we've, uh, we've we've had some some conjoining paths, and it's good to see your face, again, <laughs> even if it is remotely. For all my uh, listeners and viewers, Jeff and I haven't uh, spoken in in a while, but I've been following him a little bit on his adventures and different things he's done, and want to talk a little bit about his life. You know, some of his medical background. Uh, he's a mountain guide. He's got his own company, and and many other things. Our connection um, to set the tone, Jeff. Like I remember, so it's it's interesting listening to you, uh, Eric, and Jeff Sherna on the No Barriers uh, podcast because my connection uh, through to to you was through Eric, of course. But I had wrote a message to Dave Sherna when he was running. I think Global Explorers at the time, mm -hmm. right. and then you guys, uh, you guys got me on the Mexico climb, the expedition uh, that that was, was this international thing with C Canadian, American, and uh, and Mexican uh, mm -hmm. uh, blind and visually impaired. That was your first big mountain too, wasn't it? It was. That yeah. was uh, a year or so after my injury, and right. uh, still very very fresh. I was. I was it hurt me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The uh, it was challenge. You know what was so challenging for me is I uh, kept on visualizing who I was before and how much I sucked at the time on that on that yeah. climb. And I remember you guys being just you. You you guys were badasses, and uh, I was I was frustrated. I was frustrated about mm -hmm. my arm and problems, but but I looked up to you guys. I still do, whether you believe it or not. And uh, and you guys have uh, you guys have. Uh, launched me you know tr you know catapulted me in in a, in a good direction uh you well know, so. so that you know i, re I ref i've reflected on that trip many times whenever i think of you i think of that trip you know because that was my initial introduction to you and i knew how how fresh that it was for you um but you're such a strong soul that it was you you were hiding it as best you could right <laughs> i mean it felt like I, and now I know you. I know I've shared a lot of adventures with you, so I know now you were really, you were still, you were very much coming to grips with what had just recently happened, and it felt like maybe that trip, that Mexico volcano climb for you, was, you know, in a way, sort of the most profound ass whooping that you had <laughs> had, voluntarily since since your injury, and it in a it also showcased uh how how much you know emotional and physical pain that you'd you'd been you'd been uh you know having to deal with and that was me right i mean because oh, yeah, those man. days were long days and i remember that summit day in particular um i was dealing with my arm my arm, arm was hurting more than was, you know the vision yeah. the, the sight loss affected right. my uh, ability to be agile and fluid and quick so got everybody listening this is 2008 i was wounded and in uh 2009 i can't remember the date we we were on on a on this volcano is i'll butcher or, or Zaba, i think is Ista. What it was. Ixta, Ixta. 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 Okay, yeah. that's yeah. right yeah uh, in mexico not far from mm -hmm. a mecca mecca and right. uh it's like a 17 to and I, I we got to the i got to the false summit with with the big big group and and Eric and Jeff and the guys with the smaller team pushed on I think part um, partially on a glacier to the to the summit but right. it was an amazing uh, experience for me but it, it hurt you know it was I was so, felt so broken so so uh, sapped uh, at that point um, when I was on cloud nine a year earlier mm -hmm. you know going down the road of uh, becoming a soldier, professional soldier, you know, which I, and I never really accomplished in, in my opinion. And, uh, and so, um, but from that, you know, uh, I met, I've met some great people. I wouldn't change a thing. Uh, I may not even have done ever done some of the things I, I've been able to accomplish, uh, over the past decade, um, uh, without loss of sight and the challenge that, that, uh, I've faced. But more, this is more about you, Jeff. This thing. Well, well, hold on. I don't want to move on. I don't want to move on. From okay. That. Hold on a second because, you know, you're talking about transformation. And from that point, 
this was, this is 2009. I mean, we're talking a decade ago, Steve. Yeah. Right. So in that decade, I mean, yeah, I know that you have me as the, as the guest here, but still <laughs> to the transformation that you've made in those 10 years is pretty remarkable. So if we go back to that summit day, you know, all summit days are shit shows, right? Yep. And so that one was no exception. And like you said, that it's really, I bet you look back at that and, and you're pretty uh, amazed at the sense that in the, in the fact that you, and it wasn't your blindness that, that, that day. No, it was man. the pain and the cold that you were feeling from your arm. And I remember very, very distinctly you and I were together almost that whole day, if you'll remember correctly. Like it was, it was you and me. Um, it was everybody else, but I mean, I yeah. felt like I felt like I was saddled up next to you yeah. for a reason that day. And you, uh, you said to me, you know, you were having problems with the like warmers in your gloves, and your gloves was not your gloves were not doing this. And you couldn't <laughs> get your gloves and stuff on, and you were just feeling overwhelmed. And you were like, well, if I could see, you know, I could do this. And I was like, but you can't. <laughs> but you can't. I think you said that too on, on the Lobuche expedition I may have too. Said that at Lobuche. Yeah, I oh right, maybe that happened there too. That's I mean, true. I just you know, it's hard love, man. I we did it to yes. you know serving in the military. We did it to each other. It's just how it is, and I think the crowd that we hang out with, the people that become driven to, to push themselves in the great outdoors in the wilderness. Uh, you understand, you understand these things. And yeah, uh, yeah. And it was, it was a little bit of tough love and I hope that now, you know, it wasn't, it's not as maybe, maybe you look back now fondly on it as opposed to, God, that guy's nasty. Well, I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember you guys giving me a hard time about a flashlight. I think we were riding in the vehicle, Eric. And, and I was like, it was on the, it was on the packing list. And, um, you, you brought a headlamp and uh, yeah, I brought Yeah. And I, uh, I, well, I said, you know, if I fell down somewhere in the middle of the night and I uh, got knocked out and you guys were like, uh, you know, this was what I was thinking in my mind. I, I yeah. think I said it in a short way, a uh, brief way uh, that, <laughs> you know, maybe I could use that as a tool to, to get someone's attention, you know? And you're like, Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, and then we threw it on the floor <laughs> and smashed it. No, um, yeah. but, uh, no, I, I, uh, hey, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I got tough skin. The uh, you know, blindness is, um, among many other things, uh, among my exper short experience, you know, in, in a combat zone, uh, changed my life. It's made me stronger. It's given me good, good things and bad things. And, uh, it's just good to know you. And, uh, and that, you know, I, uh, I, I want I want Eric to come on the show. Maybe maybe he will someday. I thought maybe he'd surprise me and he'd be like right next year or something. <laughs> He's gonna be yeah. like, ah, Steve, I'm here, you know. But uh, no, he uh, yeah he he would love to. He would love to <laughs> you know, we've all shared we've all shared a lot of things together. And then for the listeners and viewers too, you know, we we uh, so that was 2009, and then we uh, you were a part of our christening what was then Soldiers to Summits. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, I, I don't know. Do you want to get, give a backstory on that? And then maybe sure. I'll, I'll fill in a little bit of the color uh, there. Absolutely. So um, I met Eric Weinmayer and Jeff Evans, who were speaking, who I'm speaking to, of course. And uh, that kind of solidified some things. And uh, the very next year, there was uh, some things going on in the background. And this, this trip to the Him Him Himalaya, the Himalayas, uh, came up. And it was you, Jeff, I think that wrote me and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and asked me about it before anybody, anybody yep. else. And, uh, and I appreciate that <laughs> yep. and, yep. uh, I'll, I'll never forget that. So, uh, but the, um, so I got this invite to go on this trip and, uh, I think, you know, world team sports was involved and, 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 right. and some other things. Uh, and so we, uh, it ended up becoming this, this trip, an anniversary for, for you guys. Your, your mm -hmm. successful ascent of Everest in 2001 mm -hmm. with Eric um, and, and Eric being the first blind man to, to climb, climb the Everest. And uh, so there was going to be an anniversary for that and to give back to soldiers or warriors who had, had served the country because we had been at war for so long at that point. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we assembled this team. I was part of the team. There were some great people on the team. And uh, we, we, we left in, in October of that year, if I'm not mistaken, 2010, uh, mm -hmm. for Nepal, for Kathmandu. 
and yeah uh, yeah and you know we we uh you know now everything is more clear in your rearview mirror right like you can <laughs> see things now in retrospect and hindsight can yeah, yeah and consider how uh, how we could have done things better more effectively more efficiently or and we didn't really know what we were getting into back then. Well, um, before you go yeah. on with that, man. Yeah. See, I always, my inter <clears throat> people always believe in the power of word. You know, you, you read something, it's like gospel. It means something. It's like mm -hmm. the quotes. Um, and then interpret, you know, there. Uh, I thought that trip was amazing and great. And you guys did a wonderful job. It was an expedition. It wasn't a program. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know what the back, That's back, right. back story was. But that that trip was, you know, was 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 an amazing trip in the sense of there was a little bit of this and that like with the curriculum, but it was it was primarily a, 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 an expedition. Let's go climb a mountain. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that, though, was, you know, it stemmed something else, you know, that that, that maybe you're more speaking about. I, I don't know, you know, because you're. I think your feeling of that trip too, even back then, I remember when we were back and, and we were hanging out in the bars was, uh, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I, and I think it's how every, individually, every, how everybody absorbs it. So, well, you yeah. know what happens with, with, uh, when you, well, when you yeah. pull a, when you pull a bandaid off, um, it hurts. Oh yeah. And you know what i don't think we anticipated in that journey which now now we're more prepared as the program is has grown and evolved into no barriers warriors and mm -hmm. it, um you know it's touching literally thousands of lives a year but but back then we really didn't know what that was going to look like or feel like yeah um and i i uh i look back at that and and only hope that it was the precursor of goodness and that uh, you know we we think of the few, the people who were on that expedition and you know there's there's one who was with us that's that's not um anymore and yeah. you know and and i you know that i wonder how more much more of a positive impact we could have made then um but yeah. you know it, it's all it's all <clears throat> easy to to monday morning yeah. quarterback it now but you know i think <laughs> I think I think that I think you guys did um, a wonderful job. I wasn't well, privy. Thanks, yeah. I need to be clear about something. Uh, I wasn't privy to some things that you you probably were. So you know you were getting back you know some 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 back message story and and messages from 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 uh, the other participants and maybe I know for me it was uplifting and um uh, and it was a great trip and uh, I still keep in touch with a lot of the characters. And Dan, who, who who we lost, I I had been climbing with him off and on, uh, in different places. And we, the last big climb uh, was in uh, on Elbrus, Mount Elbrus, in, in the Caucasus in Russia. And uh, I, uh, I I miss Dan. I just visited his his spot in Arlington not too long ago, and mm -hmm. um, and and you know I remember talking to him and and and, and telling him you know. Because uh, he thought he looked up to me, he said that to me, and I said, "Man, you should be proud of all everything you've been through, yeah. and where you and 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 where you are. You're here now, man. You're you're still you know you're still alive, and it's so uh, it's kind of it's unfortunate that uh, and I and I wanted to come out when when you guys were on the front range doing doing everything, but I was having a horrible thing happen in my life at the time too, and uh, but you know it 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 it, it reminds me and and when we've been Eric and I talk frequently about this uh, that you know when you you have these these life-changing experiences which you have had Steve and and everybody that was on that in, inaugural run yep. and then and, and pretty much everybody let's just be yeah. some some are more profound than others but all of us have had transformational experiences that sort of punch us right in the gut and and you know, knock us down. And uh, it's a matter of, of alignment after that and how you manifest that adversity. And, you know, some people, you know, curl up and, and ball up and, and sort of get into a defensive pose. Yeah. And other people open up and are receptive. And then, and then there's ever the rest of us that kind of fall in the, the middle ground uh, for, for how we respond to adversity and just the, the shit that happens to us in our, you know, as we sort of walk our paths, but, yeah. um, you know, I, 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 
look at you know people like you and and and, and Eric and and a lot of the other people that I've that I've interfaced with along the way with with um, all the, the injured veterans that I've worked with and as well as all the austere med medicine deployments that I've done. Um, and I look at people who have just had their asses kicked and then had the, the transparency to say, you know what, that hurt, that sucked. It, it, I'm not going to pretend like it all was fairy farts and unicorn. You know, <laughs> uh, it's always just really great because it did. It sucked. It oh, was yeah. dark. It hurt. And sometimes it still does. Um, but you know what, I'm going to continue to find the way to, uh, establish and then maintain traction and momentum, uh, and, in and, and try to positively impact the world and make it a better place. And, oh, you know, most definitely. Guys. You know, <clears throat> people often speak about like the post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic stress disorder. But how often do people talk about post-traumatic growth? And I try to remind a lot of people uh, that are that are going through a big transition in their life, and just like leaving the military is a you know I was just filling out the no barriers um, uh, summit application. I'm gonna go for the first time, so, so it's in Lake, Ta oh, Lake Tahoe. Oh, that's gonna make a lot of people happy. We were just talking about that today. <laughs> I just I paid for it, filled it out. I filled yes. out. The, I paid. I paid for the VIP. I thought that was visually impaired person. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the, I just wanted to contribute, but the um, but anyway the <laughs> the uh, on on that application it goes like what would you say to a service member that's transitioning? Yeah, and I you know I I, I try to tell service members because I, I mean I'm a service member that yeah you know we we hear about all these stereotypes these these things that happen to veterans. Uh, cause, cause it's kind of, it can mess with your mind. It can mess with your psyche. You know, you, you come out and you haven't maybe even been through the shit, you know, haven't been through, you know, bad stuff. Uh, but you served and it was hard, just like a lot of jobs you come out and then you, you know, you're amongst this community of, uh, of people that have been to the far side of the spectrum, you know, to, to, to in firefights, to witness death, uh, and everything in between. And, um, but you, you know, you learn something through all your challenges and experiences and, and you can use that uh, f for the path forward, you know, for, for, I, I always look at how service members are taught to be, um, flip, flip a switch, you know, we're, we're rolling in the sector, everybody, you know, let's red direct, go red direct, you know, lock and load. We're you know, doing our radio communications. We're rolling out, uh, out in sector, you know, and, uh, and we've changed, we, you know, we're, we're in a mode of operation that is different than our norm. And so I want, I want people to apply that to their recovery and their rehab. Think about, you know, that's kind of what I used to think in the hospital bed. I was like, oh, I wanted to be this and that, you know, it's dreams, it's fluff. Um, that's gone, it's gone, it went up in smoke. Now I gotta think about life and reality this way. Mm. And, and I, gotta, I gotta take that mentality, that drive that got me in the army Mm. Uh, it got me where I was going and I, it, now I got to apply it to my, what, what I'm dealing with now in my life. And so, mm. yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's, um, but you guys, you guys did good. I mean, with that, with that expedition and, um, that's, I mean, look what's come from it, you know, come, come yeah, well, you know, so, so I mean, now, so now just as a dovetail off of what you were saying, you know, it started as that soldiers to summit, that christening run with you. And then it, you know, it's sort of it morphed into what is now No Barriers Warriors. And, you know, there's all these extensions, stuff that I don't even know. <laughs> I, I can't even I don't even know what's happening yeah. to the fullest degree at this point. But I mean, I'm just so proud of where it's been. And I continue to hear testimonials of of uh, folks that went through the program. The curriculum's gotten more refined and it's really That's allowed. Great. You know, something that that I think that really is synced up with what you were just saying, Steve is you know you go through those experiences you had a purpose in your life that purpose was was pulled out from under your feet and then used as a bludgeoning stick to beat you in the head yeah and then you pull back <laughs> and then you've got to redefine like all right so that was my purpose before now i've got to redefine what my purpose yeah. is oh, because yeah. purpose is really the foundation of it all right yeah. so that's really what it comes down to is is is, is, is redefining like okay so what is it it was that then but it's not that now so let's figure out what i can really put my momentum into and when you and i were in mexico together that 
you know, within a year of your injury, yeah. um, you didn't know what your purpose was at that point because your your initial primary target was taken from you. Yeah. Right? I mean, oh, so yeah. that was like the, the emotional. I lost my target. You lost your target. Yeah, I, lo- I lost the objective. And, yeah. uh, and I had to redefine that. And, mm-hmm. and we all we all go through that in life yeah that's right that's i mean right. I, I, when i listen to you guys i i love what you guys are doing with the no barriers podcast and i've been wanting to do this what i'm doing here for a long time and i dedicate this show to you guys so to the people i've met that's that i keep telling uh to my listeners and viewers that because uh, uh shoot without without all those experiences uh, uh i wouldn't be where i am today yeah. i want to i want to you know ask you more about yourself and in your life and uh <laughs> where um where did you grow up primarily in colorado or were you well, else from it, elsewhere ish i mean because now you know i i was born in uh the blue ridge mountains and so i was this restless the kid. ancient mountains. i think you, you and i have yes ancient the most ancient yeah man um you and i've talked about this before i was just this kind of restless punk ass kid back in the day <laughs> and i used to get in a lot of trouble and I'm sure I had what would now be called, you know, ADD uh, back then. I mean, I was just, I was just a grateful punk. dead. Yeah. Well, that, that came, that came later. later. Thank, you, thank you for pointing that out. Um, but, you know, I didn't know, I didn't, uh, I didn't have, I didn't, here it is. I didn't have a purpose. Yeah. I didn't have a purpose. All I was doing was just kind of spinning my wheels. And then I moved to Colorado when I was 19 and I found my purpose, which became mountains and rocks. And, and, uh, that I didn't know anybody when I moved out here. And did the so Blue Ridge was, mountains kind of give you that, sure. the, that feeling of wanting to be near bigger mountains and stuff yeah, and be outside. Yeah. That's right. Cause the place where I felt like I was the most comfortable, like emotionally was out in the trees, in yep. the woods. Yep. And when I would start to bug out or whatever, or just be unsettled, I could just go out in the woods. And I was just, I was, that was where I was the happiest. And I wasn't really keenly aware of that, right? Uh-huh. I didn't know that that was the case. Yeah. It just was. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I understand. But I hadn't identified it like, oh, I need to be in the mountains all the time. It's just, <laughs> I would be unsettled and sort of like edgy. And then I'd get out in the mountains in the woods and I'd feel like I would smile a lot more and just be really happy. And yeah. so, you know, I could have gone, I was considering, honestly, Steve, going on the military route. I took my ASVABs. I scored pretty high. Yeah. I was going to join the Navy. That was when Top Gun was coming out. I'm going to fly <laughs> jet, sir. Val Kilmer and, and uh, Tom yeah, Cruise. I was gonna, I was gonna be you could be my right? wingman. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> anytime. Ice man. Ice man. Um, man. <laughs> so, um, I no, I got you. Absolute opposite direction. I grew my hair out and started smoking weed and following the Grateful Dead. And <laughs> so if I could have gone in, in any of the opposite way, I sure did. There's nothing wrong with did. that, man. Yeah, I guess not. I mean, it was whatever. good stuff. So I didn't really. I wasn't contributing to anything in the world um, <laughs> at that point. But then, yeah, then I met Eric and we started climbing. Yeah. Uh, wait. Wait a minute. Hold. On. You met. No, I just, you just met Eric. You just. <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah, I was living. I was living. I was working at a little. Uh, outdoor outdoor school for kids um in 94 um right outside of joshua tree california and i was just like working on the climbing wall i was an emt at the time and i was doing their little medical program and you know their safety program and climbing and teaching the kids how to climb on artificial walls and stuff and then that's when i heard about eric and he came out we got to know each other and started climbing and and uh and then it very quickly escalated where was this bigger. again i'm sorry joshua tree josh oh joshua yeah. tree wow it's yeah right outside of la so yeah yeah i've been Southern there Cal- i've camped there. there yeah pretty yeah. magical place yep. um thousands of rock climbing routes everywhere and yeah um so yeah eric and i started climbing together and then very quickly um about a year or so after we met we we did our first big mountain well we did rain here in the winter time but then we did denali and and uh in alaska and we're successful and then we just sort of continued to to uh you know play off of that success of denali and did you have a mountain guide company at the time no no uh -uh. i was just a bum you know i was living in my van and uh just climbing all the time i wasn't even like a i wasn't even like a certified aga mountain guide you know i was just a dude who could get around the hills pretty good and you know and had a medical background so yeah um yeah so that's where that Hmm. that uh sort of nurtured itself from and 
And then, yeah, you mentioned you mentioned earlier Everest. We we climbed Everest in 2001 with a pretty remarkable team of 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 folks. Oh yeah. Um, and 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 then you know, I think that the really curious thing that came from that was and and that I find very compelling for people who don't know about that story is we had a lot of people tell us that that taking Eric up Everest was was really reckless. Yeah. Um, and that I not since, only was, yeah. well, not only is he going to get dead, he was going to get a couple of us dead with him. Uh, and it's a ru- and it, it'll ruin the career too. It'll, ru- uh, it'll be a career ruiner yeah. for, for me as a guide and, and, yeah. you know, and, and he's going to get killed and then people will be like, well, what'd you think was going to happen to the blonde dude on Everest? You know? <laughs> and, uh, so, well, you know, I mean, you, but these are experts on Everest that were saying these things. And yeah. that's what we realized is that they weren't experts on us. And that if we went and did the things that we knew we could do, which was just be loyal and committed to something that was bigger than us, that even if we didn't stand on top, that we go and we give it a good shot. And, can, I, can I pause yeah. you for a sec? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I feel that all the time sometimes with, with, with doing things. But the interesting thing is, is when you... When you when you develop a, a team of people and, and systems and techniques uh, of forms of communication, which which are all things like you know Eric has his like baby heads, and I know he's um, evolved over the years, and you know he's more fluid and agile as a blind person, like like anybody. You do anything for ten thousand plus hours, you know, you get better at it. Yeah. But yeah. but you know, I'll often go skiing, you know, like here on any of the in the resort towns here in Colorado. And you got a team, you have two people around you, you know, maybe one just or one person's guiding you. And, you you know, you might wear vests if you're on the main slopes because there's so many people. Well, there's so many people that are just uh, that just get out there on the mountain and they, they have no training at all. They just go on their own. And and I hear about people going and climbing Everest, you know, and doing these incorporated climbs uh, that have a lot of money. And some of them spend a lot of time to train hard you know, and, and, and follow the curriculum maybe that you provide. Uh, and, and others just um, are, are ferried, you know, in a sense. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong to say that. You can tell me what you think or, or not even elaborate on it. But it's kind of interesting to have that, those feelings of like, oh, don't take a blind person or don't take, you know, don't do this. Um, when, you know, there's a lot of people that are blind in a sense to doing things. There's a first for everything. Um, mm-hmm. It, it is interesting, uh, 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 you know, people's perspectives and, and psychology. And uh, uh, it's not like you, you, you guys just went to Everest to, to climb it. You, I'm sh- maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe you guys did, but you guys, you were just mentioning Denali and and other things. And 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 I, I know Eric, and I know how he is with um, uh, his uh, progression of of. Of, of working through things and and it's not it's not it's a it's a lot of work a lot of a lot of a lot of things that are built to to make well, it a, a solid stra- solid thing. strategies yeah right? strategy and, absolutely. And, and absolutely so you alluded to it and a lot of folks and you know i've i've, I've been on everest a bunch since then mm-hmm. and i've seen a lot of uh, what you're talking about. Which Jeff's, the, Jeff's climbed the seven summits, all, all, the tallest mountains on, on the seven continents for everybody. But, but spent a long time in, 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 in on Nepal a, in, absolutely. Since, since 2000 um, and, you know, did search and rescue up there uh, three, two, three, almost three seasons ago now. And yeah. I tell you, when I, the, the demographic of the guided client now uh, has changed, the commercialization of of Everest has has absolutely changed the the face of that mountain, um, yeah. and and so you know I think when Eric uh, when we took Eric up there in two thousand one, uh, it was he a different was, mentality. He was more well. He was also uh, way more experienced than I'd say well over fifty percent, if not like seventy five percent of the people who give it a try these days. Yeah, and that's yeah. a fact. That's a fact because I mean, we'd spent we climbed every day, all day, all the time for years and years and years, and you know the people who pay a lot of money now to go up there um, are not, uh, you know, are not nearly as, as seasoned of a climber as, as he was back when we did it. Well, I think of the John Krakauer, you know, into thin air and that uh, that whole incident in the nine, late nineties. Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I I just wanted to to kind of talk about that uh, because it, it, it is interesting um, if people understood, like I've been on a bunch of expeditions, both climbing now and river and, and many other things. And uh, 
the, the amount of training I do to be safe, to be an asset uh, and well trained is is it is so important uh, to the uh, to the whole success of the uh, expedition or, or, or mission that we're doing. And, and, and I think sometimes people just focus so much on the, the disability or the blindness and that's it, you know, um, and they yeah, don't. Your, your military background gives you that, that insight that a lot of people don't understanding that you don't just recklessly roll right into a mission, No, right? No. Like you have to, your team has to be firing on all cylinders. You have to all know what your roles and responsibilities are and how to execute them at a really high level or, there's consequences, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's what you do now. You've just re retuned your, your approach towards your missions. Just, it's the same style. It's just a different mission. now, right? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. but I mean, Jeff, the, um, you were saying, and I, and I interrupted your, your flow, but the, uh, I, uh, I mean, I, you, you, you know, Eric and, and, and Everest, you guys were climbing, you went to climb it and, and you were successful and, 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 and I think you were, you know, I'm asking you about your life that, that, that had to have a huge, that had to catapult you guys into a, a different kind of place. <laughs> well, it gave us a platform to be able to tell the story and then, in, you know, to tell the story and promote uh, capabilities and what a true team looks like leadership, what yeah. real trust and teamwork and, and communication lore look like. But then also, and from a selfish perspective, it gave us the platform to be able to be like, let's go have more fun. You know, oh, yeah. It's like, let's go do more expeditions. Cause you know, now, um, you know, I think this is curious for you. Um, you know, when, when we did Everest, uh, the NFB, yep. uh, it was, was a big sponsor. Yeah, so it was a big sponsor, and they rolled the dice um, because, you know, if Eric would have gotten dead, uh, you know, then of course they would there would have been a lot of backlash. But because we were successful, uh, it became a really good opportunity for the NFB to to be able to showcase the capabilities of blindness um, yeah. within within our culture and what we can do. So I always think about that, you know, like it could have gone either way from them. They would have had a, a dead, a dead blind dude and everybody being like, once again, like what do you think was going to happen? Or they get a guy on billboards and saying yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm blind. Look what I can do. Right. I mean, if either any of you guys died, it's, it's just as, as bad. I mean, it's, it's so yeah. interesting to think about, um, how we rate things or, uh, I mean, I could mm -hmm. walk across the street with someone that's helping me and they, they could walk me into a car and we both could get hit, you know, hurt because yep. they were, they were paying attention to my feet or something, you know? Uh, so it's so, it, I, I don't know. I mean, if anybody would die on the, on the expedition, it's, 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 that's a horrible, tragic, uh, uh, failure and, 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 and negative thing in a sense, but it's, um, it's a dangerous thing. Uh, mm -hmm. that you're going into. I mean, yep. when I, when I volunteered to, 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 to join the military and to go into a combat at arms occupation, uh, it was, it's, I mean, and when I, I agree to go on an expedition as someone who's blind, I personally feel that I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it in a way that I want to, I want to push the limits. I want to, I'm, I'm doing this risk assessment and, and I'm trying to train myself and understand things to my best ability. Maybe I don't do a great job. You know, I don't have the great, the greatest people around me at all, all the time, but, uh, you hope for that. You, 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 you make that happen maybe more than hope and, uh, and you execute. And so, um, but what you guys did absolutely was amazing. And, uh, and, and there's a reason why, you know, I reached out to Eric, you know, who's the best person mm -hmm. to, to, to talk to if you want to be out in the outdoors, uh, climb mountains, um, uh, another blind person that's trying to that's doing it yeah. so, so i remember in in mexico and in nepal i think you told me both of those trips this climbing thing is bullshit <laughs> <laughs> i well, think you actually even like you may have just sworn off I, I think i've heard you swear off climbing three or four times just you know i i probably i probably Short term memory loss i don't think anything's changed with a lot of things i do even with kayaking, like I've been kayaking a lot of rivers, because uh, uh, Lonnie Bedwell is a good friend, yeah. and, and Eric, they both uh, inspired me to think about it. Something I'd never cared to do, be in the water, uh, and, and paddle that big water and, and that kind of stuff. And so, uh, 
uh, if you spend time with me there, because my left hand comes even into more play with the yeah, paddle yeah. and I use an assistive device, um, the cold water, all that, you know, it freaks me out. It makes, it makes it a lot harder, but I love that. I love that, you know, deep mm-hmm. inside, you don't understand. I ex- externally express something that's different from my internal feeling. I'm a very rebe- I'm rebellious against my brain and, and, and uh, sen- <laughs> in the sense of uh, doing dangerous things or, yes. or, or things that people say, I just want to sit on the couch, you know what I mean? Yes. Well, so, so a good testament to you, though, is that you, know, you said in the moment you'd be like, this mountaineering thing's bullshit. And like <laughs> the very next day you're like, that was the greatest thing ever, man. I love it. Man. Exactly, man. Yeah. Exactly. No, the, uh, no, it was, I remember sucking and just, I think I'm thinking in the moment how much energy I'm wasting because I'm not fluid. You know, I, I, I get, I'm really hard on myself about those, yes, yes. those things. But and, as uh, soon as you drop, the the veil of the ego which we all have oh yeah yeah we all have and and i've seen you do it dude i've been standing right next to you before <laughs> when you finally just submitted and you're like listen this sucks but i'm gonna dig down deep and on lobache i was standing right next to you right like that whole summit yeah night, you and charlie yep yeah when it was really really hard i mean that was oh a yeah hard long day. i never felt that i've never felt le- no oxygen before i <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. 20,000 feet. Yeah. Um, I love it though. You know, uh, next January, hoping to climb something big here in the Western hemisphere, but the, uh, and, and uh, I love climbing. I, I, uh, I love it more now than I, than I did then. <laughs> sure. But yeah. I, well, but like you just said, but I do become, hate it. It's become, a love hate well, thing. It is. Yeah, I really do. I've been uh, doing it over half my life and I, and I agree with you completely, but you have also, become more efficient and effective with your systems right oh, and yeah. understanding your body and how to navigate terrain you've just you're just way better than you were 10 9 you know 10 9 years ago right? okay so. enough about me the me- the medical side of you, how did you get the <laughs> medical stuff <laughs> i mean the, you uh you're a physician physician assistant i am yes yeah man that's uh that's big stuff right there uh, sometimes you need you know more than the surgeons and stuff uh, you do really i mean uh, nurses i, I mean talk about me personally <laughs> the, the, the profession itself most pas do know more i'm uh i'm, I'm just kind of a hack but um I, I yeah i'm a pa and and um i've always loved medicine and that's cool man i somehow figured out a way to blend the two things i love the most which you know are medicine and mountains absolutely and create a, a situation where i could be in the mountains and then still be an asset to my my team but, um, yeah. when things you know when when medical issues come up because clearly they do like every single expedition of somebody shits the bed and you know i have to intervene medically like on lobache boy yep. we had we, yeah, we had, had, we had go- all kinds of things happen on that trip oh my gosh yeah yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, we, too, we nearly lost our our uh, Delta Force dude, Matt. Who, yeah. Oh yeah. I uh, got severe cerebral edema. You guys we actually had to all night long a gamma gamma off bag and, and which is a hyperbaric chamber and and pump up this chamber all night long with him in it and uh, uh, yeah and this is a guy who's you know hardcore he's, he's a, he was he is still is a, a super tough dude and yep. um, just got sick and you know. And so, yeah, medicine and, and mountains uh, came together for me in a pretty cool way. Um, and that I've been able to. Uh, you've tra- you know, you've traveled a lot for that. I, I know that you, and I don't mean to cut you off. I, I, I'll, let, I'll let you go. But I wanted to bring up, you know, you were in the Middle East doing some work. Uh, right. So I, I, what I found is that um, it's kind of in the same spirit of what we were talking about is that purpose. You know, that purpose is. Uh, you know, medicine is a, uh, I'm not very good at many things, but I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm a hack at medicine, but I can, I'm pretty good at like altitude and, and austere medicine. That's uh-huh. just, that's my specialty. Like when things are really bad, when the resources are limited, um, that's when I think the medicine Gotta makes make the most sense to me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so I've been blessed in my life, uh, to be able to have the opportunity to volunteer uh, medically on an international and a global scale. Uh, and I volunteer with a couple different NGOs, one particular, 
where uh, you know we went to uh, we went into Nepal right after the earthquake. Yeah, and I was on the ground for a month, and we were we flew into uh, these tiny little villages and just and set up a little mobile mash clinic and yep. and saw and treated thousands and thousands of little of local villagers um, for their for their trauma physical yeah. trauma, but then you know what. Uh, weeks later it was emotional trauma and and um and you know that that's the kind of thing that really resonates with me is that that type of service to be being of service to 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 people that i to the, as many people as i can but specifically to people that have impacted me um positively which the nepal has the himalayas have contributed to my life immensely so when that earthquake hit I mean, I was like, I was on a plane 48 hours later. Um, and then, and then, uh, that's commendable. Yeah. Man. And then I was asked to be the chief medic for, uh, the first ever dedicated search and rescue team on Everest, um, two seasons ago. Um, I worked with five Sherpas and a couple seriously badass helicopter pilots. I'm not sure how they got their balls inside the cockpit of the <laughs> helicopters because they're just Are they sexy. Nepalese or are they from other uh, a couple of Nepalis and then uh one Kiwi and then a couple Americans. I worked with all of them and we did um close to eighty missions, eighty rescue missions over the course of two months and wow. saved over a couple dozen lives, many of which were Sherpas and Nepalis, which made me very, very happy. It wasn't just like the rich, you know, spoiled <laughs> yeah. Westerners, you know. For our listeners, helicopters don't fly well at high altitude. So, no, no, and, and uh, they don't. And you know, all helicopters crash. Yeah. Uh, you know, they do. They, they, they oh yeah, helicopters crash, man. You know that they do all the time in military yeah. operations, man. Yeah, and and they're 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 beautiful machines. They saved my life. Wouldn't be here today not. without. Yeah, one. you would not be there today if it weren't for being evac, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So so you know, I, that was pretty. That was a pretty fruitful experience just because, you know, it was it was a lot of high intensity, as you can imagine. Like we landed at the helicopter for a rescue at twenty two thousand feet. Wow. We landed. I got out of the helicopter um, and uh, and uh, I'm, I don't know if Vic has a has a photo of that. But, you know, there's there was a lot of really high level uh, high level things happening, you know, very, very quickly, a lot of decisions that had to be made very, very quickly. Um, and you know, I, The military like i had my job yep and these guys had their jobs you're risking and, your life man yeah and, and for, we all for others. need the other person to to execute at a very very high level so that we're all going to be um you know going to be okay <laughs> you know and be able know. To, to accomplish our mission that's cool stuff man i mean yeah. Just, just to give you of yourself like that. Uh, 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 you say earlier, you're like, ah, I wasn't living, you know, like when you were younger. But you know, you when you're young, though, you, you're figuring it out. So look where, well, yeah, look where you we're went. All, you we're know? all pretty selfish early on. Like we're all trying to <laughs> to balance out that that ego that drives us all, and trying yeah. to find that place where. And then as we age, ego's okay. Uh, it, it is. It is as long as it's harnessed the right way. Yeah. So as long as the ego is harnessed. Absolutely. Because and this is, I have my, my, my son's 13. You haven't seen him for a while, but no, you met him. He was itty bitty, but he's 13 now. You know, he's a teenager. And boy, if there's any message that I try and my wife try to instill with him, it's just, you know, try to look for ways to, to help other people whenever you can and harness your ego yeah. so that Humble your ego, ego can be a, you can implement it for power and um, for, for, for like fuel um, that kind of power, like power to be able to, to keep motivated, yeah. but then understand that you have to share your ego yourself with the, the greater good and the, the, the other people are out there. That's just one of the messages I keep trying to reinforce with him. Oh, he was, he was great, man. Uh, when he, he was so disciplined, uh, uh, when I, when I met him, so uh, I'm not going to well, drop any names, but the, um, yeah, the, uh, I, I, uh, 
Yeah, 13 now. Wow. <laughs> he's 13, yeah. And, he, you know, he's being raised by two Southern parents, so he still will call you Mr. Steve. You know, and, and he's, but he's, he's a good kid. You know, he, That's good. He, uh, he gets voluntold to uh, <laughs> to, uh, to uh, volunteer. So he volunteers a lot um, locally around here and, uh, as a result. But um, yeah, and then and then I know you wanted, wanted to touch on this a little bit, but um, that same NGO that I went to Nepal with after the earthquake, uh, the guy, the head of the NGO called me up uh, a couple years ago and he says, you know, I've got this, I've got this great opportunity. And he was really excited. He's like, this great opportunity, man. It's going to be really, really cool. And, you know, we're contacted <laughs> by the World Health Organization. It's going to be awesome, man. You're going to love it. And, and it's going to be in Mosul, Iraq. It's be <laughs> awesome. And, and you're going to embed with the Iraqi Special Operations Forces. And uh, yeah, and you'll be like, I said, well, what does that look like? And he goes, well, you'll, you'll be 2,500 meters behind the front line the whole time. And he was really selling it, you know, and yeah. I'm like, holy shit, man. I mean, like, that's a, that's as different than anything else I've ever done. And, and, um, what was yeah, that? So like? I went, yeah. Well, I mean, you know. I, 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 I worked with the Iraqi police and the Iraqi army, and a lot of the units were, were working, uh, like, uh, Aaron Isaacson, you know, he, he tells stories about, uh, working with guys and training, training them. And, uh, the air base where we were going to the day that I got hit on the way back from that, that, that was a big air base where they're training Iraqi, uh, airmen and stuff. Uh, so it, that was, where was that? Was that in Kabul? That, where was no, that? that was North of Baghdad, a pl- Taji, of Baghdad. Camp, camp Taji, camp Taji. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know well, if you guys, yeah, what you know, if they're using code names. Well, we were or, we yeah. were into Ir- Erbil, and then okay, um, you know, because that's a pretty neutral place these days, and yeah. it was even two years ago in the middle of the ISIS shit show. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, then then uh, we we uh, overlanded over the way to Mosul, and we were on the outskirts of of Mosul. Okay. And just for, for reference, we had um, nine of us. I was in. I was the the head of a group of critical care nurses and paramedics yeah. um, that were uh, involved with this particular team. And so, you know, you know, I know, Steve, you were, you work very closely with the federal police, which is what they're called a fed poll. Yeah. So that's the police unit of, of well, Iraq. I, yeah. And then there's, then there's the regular Iraqi army. Yeah. And then there's the Iraqi special operations yep. forces, which were trained by you, you and your contemporaries. Yeah. You know, uh, your a lot of army green those. berets too. They, they did a lot of work with those guys uh-huh. sometimes. But so. the, I can tell you this now in retrospect, and I'm sure you would concur that the fed poll, the, the police over there, those guys are just junk shows. I mean, they were so in over their heads. Their training was inadequate. It wasn't their fault, but they were the ones who we were, ha- we were, pa- those guys were getting just mauled. I oh. mean, mutilated. Um, cause they were just going out there right into the front lines and just getting, you know, switched yeah. up, you know, I don't know if you saw the same thing. Oh yeah, man. I mean, I, it was a torn up country, a torn up government. And, 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 uh, they, when I was there, they were just in shambles. They were rebuilding that, you know, they were, that was just the beginnings of, uh, you know, I mean, we were supporting Maliki, the mayor and, you know, we would do uh, meetings with them and, uh, and, and, and the different, uh, because I, I was working on the ground with a, a, a commander for you know, uh, so the um, it, it was yeah we we but witnessing the the army and the police and and their lack of discipline and and, and just lack of training like you're saying um, yeah. was uh, you know and we had a small contingent our few thousand you know even if it's fifty thousand um, is just not enough to 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 to, to lock in the country uh, the borders and the cities. I never made it to Mosul. I think Mosul's in the southern. <clears throat> so south part yeah. south part of bag southern right. south of baghdad mm-hmm. but uh That's yeah right. man did you guys did you respond a lot uh, you were acting as a unit like uh, you're teaching medicine and and, and, no, no, and going no. we out were, we were what was called a trauma stabilization point so okay we were embedded with isof and then we received all their cash so you guys were fixed you guys weren't rolling around no, we were fixed. That would be dangerous. We were just in an abandoned old house. You yeah, know? yeah. And, and uh, that we, I've been and, there. <laughs> yeah, like you know, one of those like nasty old homes. It, oh my gosh, man! It's like a multifamily home, you know. And, yeah. And uh, and now it's it was just all trashed and gross, and that's hmm. so that's what we did. We we moved into one of those places, but 
you know, the, the, that was the first few weeks. And then, um, then the general, general, uh, uh, Abbas, uh, asked us if we would move forward with them, uh, at mm -hmm. one point uh, after we'd been there for a while and we asked what that meant and he goes, well, you know, you'll be, you know, 500 meters behind the front line. And, uh, which as you know, is, is pretty, that's pretty close. It's, it's not as close as you are, but it's, it's close enough for a civilian like me, you know, and, oh, and uh, I mean, <clears throat> for, you know, lines, the lines they draw is kind of interesting that's right. for combat that's arbitrary, in sector. Right? I mean, you know, you, you were, you were, you were in a, in a country that is, um, more lawless I, I, uh, than, uh, than, mm -hmm. than some, some parts of the U S you know? So, uh, I, I, I yeah, I, uh, it, 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 especially as a foreigner or, or, or a, a supporting uh, a unit that's supporting something, you know, and then, and the overall operations that are occurring. So, I mean, it's a lot of danger, um, you know, being in a place because, you know, in Iraq, when we were there, you could be a mile away and there could be hell could break loose and you could be fine where you are, of course, you know? So, I mean, and that happened all the time everywhere in, in every conflict through time. But, uh, but definitely in, in Baghdad when I was there, you could be in one place and it's the sun shining and everything's great. You're sitting at a, I'd be sit, sitting in a garden, uh, full decked out, full battle rattle with my machine gun. And I'm watching Apache's uh, strafe a uh, objective, you know, five mm -hmm. miles away with, you know, with uh, hellfire. And uh, so, I mean, right there is hell and where I'm, there's nothing's going on, you know? So, yeah, and but, so that was, that was our story for those days that we were forward i mean because they were they were uh all the apaches were just right over top of us and they were yeah. letting those hellfires go yeah um literally like uh, you know maybe a thousand feet yeah. yeah you know right above us and they were so they were knocking the, the bad guys out but then what happened is isis found out we were there hmm. they found out our medical clinic was there uh -uh. and they thought there would be no other better thing for them than to you know than to destroy the infidels you know support yeah. from uh and so they came after us and they 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 uh they snuck in an older fellow through the uh all these displaced refugees were walking down the road and he snuck through hmm. and he set up shop um about um, I would say about a hundred meters away from our position and our, the house that we had moved into. Was he just doing some ISR, like intelligence surveillance yep. reconnaissance? He was just yep. watching, watching. And he was texting across the line to them mm. where we were. And then he was releasing pigeons hmm. to notify where our, where our position was. And so yeah. the one, like the fourth morning forward, all these RPGs started landing all around us and blew our door, the doors off the garage where all the ambulances were pulling up yeah. and, and uh boy it was it was absolute chaos you know and these guys were like surrounding us but you know there was we were we were actually as as untrained as the federal police were in iraq the, the special ops guys were uh, were actually pretty good at what they were doing and, and kept us safe obviously but yeah. the casualties were just immense man i mean crazy immense hundreds and hundreds of of, what of were you seeing? With, like blast well, injuries, all, all penetrating trauma, penetrating all, all, trauma, yep. blast injuries. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I, I must have put in dozens of chest tubes and innovated all these. You know, I don't know how many people. And, yeah, you know, and, and saved a lot, and there was there was you know a lot that we couldn't. There was there was unsalvageable, and yeah, um, but it was it was a heady heady thing. Um, and it, it gave me more respect that I already have for the men and women who serve and have served. And, and, and honestly, um, the, the place that I, uh, that, that affected me the most was the combat medics of the world, the guys who saved your life too, you know, and the guys yeah, who, um, who, who really put their lives out there to be able to save, you know, the, the brave men and women who serve our country and, and put, and, and, and then have to intervene medically in a really, really hard, fast, intellectual, like high level medicine. It's oh, high yeah. level medicine, you know, and, and I'm sure you've got a, some anecdotal stories that go along with that, too. Well, I mean, I, I and I, you probably don't remember. I, I was seeking out the medical profession within the Army. I, I just started as oh, an infantry. Right. 
I That's wanted right. to become a 18 Delta, a medical sergeant yeah. within the special forces. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, but they train all the guys, you know, on sucking chest wounds and, and, and splints and saline locks. And I mean, a lot of cool things that are just basic mm-hmm. stuff, you know, for, for um, st- you know, keeping someone stable uh, till the medic gets there. And then, you know, the golden hour, the golden 24 hours and, mm-hmm. and really the pipeline. Um, that the the military had put together over the you know decade plus uh, being in in those those this that part of the world um, expedited you know people to, to Walter Reed and, and other military uh, hospitals here within the U.S. so quickly, yeah. and that's uh, that's why guys live with such uh, horrible horrendous uh, wounds you know I mean guys are quadruple you know amputees and yeah and and uh, and, and so. Um, and I think there's something, you know, a fierce uh, a fire that, that 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 exists within those characters too. I mean, I I never wanted to come home broken. Uh, my mentality when I was serving on the ground was I, I want to die fast because what you know, the things that I witnessed, you know, when you witness some, I mean, just like I mean, you witness an animal dying, or you know, or you know, I mean, maybe people can't relate with people dying, but I mean. Um, when when you're witnessing you know that smell and 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 and, uh, mm, and, yeah. and 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 a lot of those things you just so all I wanted to do was uh, you know go quickly, but I I didn't I came I came home um, and so it, you know it's a different mentality and uh, and uh, well I commend you f- for that work and I and you know you you're no different I mean than a service member in the sense of like being in, in the Himalayas and try and, and and working there in Iraq. With the, with the work he did and many other things that we won't talk about probably on this on this podcast YouTube show but um I wanted to, I wanted you to you know I mean I, and you can elaborate any if there's anything else on, on your medical background because uh, every you know on everything I've done been everything I've done with you um, you've always been there as as the <laughs> the medical uh, hmm. professional yeah, so whether I liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was, uh, it was, whether you it, like it, it or the, not it was the role i chose and yeah I, I'm happy to do it. And, um, you know i i i i've been en- i've enjoyed um i've enjoyed medicine and mountains together and you know the mountains are are uh, a theater a venue that give us the opportunity to try hard things just like the battlefield for you yep. and your brothers and sisters and and you know what happens when we get put into these theaters and venues that are that we stretch ourselves really hard um, is shit gets fucked up and you know we we get broken uh, and um, that's just the nature of what happens when we're when we're out there doing hard things and, you know and and uh, and so yeah I think that's what gravi- I gravitated towards was just trying to be able to be there for to help patch people up when, when we're still out there do. doing hard things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I try to, yeah. You yeah. have a, you have a, a guide company, uh, a, a mountain visions incorporated, right? Mountain vision expeditions. expeditions. Yeah. But I mean, I've, I've slowed down on that a fair bit. I mean, I'm getting old now, Steve. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to, I don't uh, see it, man. I think, I know. Uh, of course you do. <laughs> The sunglasses filter out all my silver, <laughs> all my, uh, all my grays. Uh, um, whatever. So, so the, you know, I, I, as I've aged, I've continued to, I'm, I'm still, I still like hard things, you know, like yeah. I like to do tough stuff like you. And I like to, to continue to stretch myself and, and be, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess trying to look around the corner yeah. uh, and, and see what's next. So, um, and then continue, like we said, even right out of the gate, continuing to redefine uh, the purpose. What's I, the purpose? I yeah. want to say something because you made me think of it. The, um, you know, getting old uh, as we age, you know, blindness, my, my blindness that happened at 22 years of age. Uh, I'm 33 now. <clears throat> the uh it's i can't imagine a decade's gone by in a mm. blink of an eye man mm. <laughs> literally uh <laughs> the the um it it was an acceleration of age and uh mm. you know for I, I did you ever are you whole in the sense of um 
your, your, your physique and your body, you know, I mean, did you ever suffer something extremely traumatic, uh, uh, in the sense that it dis it's disabled you physically? Uh, no, 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 I haven't. And where I'm going with this is like, as you age, like naturally, it's kind of, you know, that it's a, it's a challenge that you can deal with. It's kind of interesting that it's these unexpected challenges that really, that really try us and, mm -hmm. and, and push us. And, uh, and, and, and so when I think of like, um, blindness, cause we kind of, we all, we, our vision deteriorates, uh, you know, our, <laughs> our joints and, uh, all, yeah. all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, and, and, and when you want to do things, you know, I, I spend a lot of time with a gentleman, uh, who was an army ranger worked in the Pentagon. He's 80 years old. I was skiing with him in snow mass just last week. And, uh, mm -hmm. he's just, you know, amazing. And I, I hope I'm like that when I'm 80, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I, th I hear about you talking about, you know, where you're living now and, and, uh, and what you're enjoying and but there's a balance, right? You, you want to, you still want to do those hard things. Uh, are there any hard things uh, on the horizon? Uh? Well, yeah, of course. I'm, uh, I, I think that, complacency is is sort of the spawn of the devil right yeah and when we when we just kind of stop still. moving yeah that and means that you're being dead. said like like you just mentioned there is the balance so i i feel like you know i live i live on a couple acres up in the foothills of the rockies and and boy i sure do enjoy you know a hard day of backcountry skiing or climbing or something and then I love sitting in my rocking chair with a delicious IPA and a frosty glass. <laughs> you know, like, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like, oh, yeah, man. I, really I like them hoppy enjoy, beers. I enjoy that a lot. So, yeah, I mean, I, I have to have things in the horizon. I leave for Patagonia here in, uh, what, uh, like two weeks from now, and I'm guiding a group of people. Um, nothing really hard. It's a yeah. it's a trek, but then it's also, a, we'll be doing a, uh, a little, you know, three-day uh, Alpine climb, uh, afterwards, uh, or to fought to sort of bring it all together. Cool. And then, you know, Eric and I, uh, as well as Charlie, who, you know, Charlie yep. Mace, he was with us on the grand Canyon just recently. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And his son too. Yep. Right. Steven. Um, so we, uh, we're going back to Nepal to do Amit Blom, and you know, Amit Blom. Oh, I know. You've that's a that jewel. Mountain. That's a jewel. Yeah, the, for... the mother's jewel. That's right. And so it's, you know that's a big that's a big hairy mountain eric and, eric's um, going to climb it uh, yep. did he successfully climb it no no is that so, is he climbing this time is that what you guys are doing yeah we're all going to go awesome. climb it in in october and this fall coming up so wow you know it's it's a big deal it's a twenty two thousand foot peak and it's super technical and well, it's exposure you know, it, a lot of exposure on that one a lot yeah. of exposure and, and it's a it, it's a it's a real it's a real it's no joke look so, it up everybody uh, i'm a de blom yeah, i'm a de blom it's uh it's really a lot of people's uh optic like the most beautiful mountain in the world because it's 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 very symmetrical yeah it's it's right it's right it's pyramid, so ama yeah. means mother in nepali uh, and then Deblom means jewel, which is the big hanging glacier that hangs down what it looks like from, from her neck. And she's just sort of, sort of, uh, is the sentinel over this whole Kumbu Valley. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a mountain that's called to, to, to us for a while. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, somehow we think now in our late forties, early fifties, that it's a good idea to go back. <laughs> what could go wrong? What could go wrong? You're yeah. living, man. That's all <laughs> yeah. the, um, I don't want to keep you forever, man. The, um, you know, we could go on for however long, but the, uh, I know, you, I, I know you have a life. You want to work out and do some other things, but, uh, is there anything else Craig, that you uh, want to add? You want to, you know, or um, shout out or do whatever. So no, I really, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, Steve, I mean, it's, it's just so good to, to see you and, and hear you. And, and it gives, it, this has been such a treat for me to be able to reflect back on, you know, and watching, you know, your progression, which takes me back to my progression and, <laughs> and thinking of the times that we've shared, because, you know, the people that I, that I really do cherish the most are the people who I've had some of the best and worst experiences in my life with. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I think we could all say that, right. Because that Absolutely. really, it bookends life is life is what happens in the middle, like on the sides of the mountain. Right. And, and we really can think about some of the hard treasury that we've had to go through in our lives and then how that treasury then in some cases gives us the fuel to be able to then get to this point where it's we have these summits and you know if you think about an expedition the few that we've shared together 
that's all kind of condensed into one experience, right? Like where there's a lot of suckage and then it's followed by, you know, a lot of joy. Oh, and, it's, a, it's yeah, an acceleration it, of life. I mean, it really it's is a huge journey it's, to go to, like to a, the summit. It's a distilled down version of life in a way, <clears> you know, so, yeah. I mean, uh, I like this quote, like, um, if I've seen further than others, it's by standing upon the shoulders of giants. And, that, and you guys have quite literally guided me through life. I tell people that all the time, uh, the people that have helped me do things. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. And I'm thankful for, for you being on the show, Jeff. Uh, yeah, so. it was my honor, buddy. My honor. And I'm psyched I get to spend some time with you this summer now. That makes me really happy. So, <laughs> um, and I might see you tomorrow because we might end up yeah, getting, man. getting stranded in, in Montrose. But thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Vic, for, for helping out in the background. Uh, no yeah, I'll let, I'll let you sign off. I'm going to say a few more things after you go. But thanks again, Jeff, man. Yeah, my pleasure. You take care. Thanks, guys. You too, brother. Yeah, you. Bye. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, Jeff Evans, and uh, look him up, you know, to touch on a few things. Jeff uh, guided Eric Weinmayer uh, on a lot of different expeditions, among, among many other guys that helped Eric. But Jeff is a good friend with Eric, and uh, they live more on the front range of Colorado <clears throat> near Denver. And uh, Jeff, Jeff's been on a lot of adventures, as you could tell and, and see. And uh, it's been, been an amazing uh, and a privilege and honor and a privilege to have um, to have been on on some of those expeditions and trips and uh, maybe we'll have him on again in the future after he does uh, does Alma de Blanc that's a big that's a big that's a big mountain that's a cool it's a cool too cool challenge for them because I know that they uh, they did that climb I think bef if I'm not mistaken before Everest in 2001 and uh, and uh, had had some trouble uh, but but they'll they'll go you know the mountain doesn't go anywhere so uh i think this is goodbye so peace and see you next time